Hello, and welcome to the second section, chapter five on probability. We're going to talk about probability rules. Uh, and so there are four things we want to talk about. Uh, quite a bit of classwork and homework to do. Uh, this is probably going to take at least two uh, longer sessions to get through. All right, so let's talk about probability models, basic rules of probability, two-way tables and probability. And then we'll talk about Venn diagrams and probability. All right, so let's uh, define some terms here uh, with respect to probability, and then we'll go through an example so you can relate uh, this these definitions. So sample space in a chance process is the set of all po uh, possible outcomes. And again, I'll give you an example. An event is a collection of outcomes from the sample space uh, or from some chance process. An event can be a unique event a uh, singular event, or it can be a subset of uh, different outcomes from a sample space. Uh, events are usually designated by capital letters, A, B, C, etc. Uh, and then a probability model is a description of some chance process that consists of two parts, a sample space, and then a probability for each outcome. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, more terms. A probability experiment is an experiment that has different results. Uh, so an example might be polling voters about who likes or dislikes the president. And then outcomes would be the possible results of the experiment. It would be like the president, don't like the president, or don't care. Uh, so those would be outcomes of an experiment. Uh, events would be a collection of one or more outcomes. So uh, we could say six people said they liked it. Four people said they didn't like the president. Uh, or two, and two people said that they didn't care, something like that. So events are a collection of outcomes. And then, of course, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes, like, dislike, and then no opinion. All right, so let's relate um, sample space events and probability model to rolling two die. Uh, so if I roll two die, there are 36 possible outcomes. And the entirety of those outcomes is called the sample space. So here's a diagram of ways that uh, two die can be rolled, where each die is unique. So then a one and a six um, is different than a six and a one. So die one is orange and die two is kind of that green gray color. And so a six and a one here is a different outcome than a one and a six. Even though the sum is the same, and the two die uh, taken in aggregate are the same. Uh, there are different outcomes because uh, one die is six and one is one for one event, and then uh, one is one and one is six for the other event. Um, all right, okay, so we can define, let's define event A as rolling a sum of a five. And in uh, that case, we have four possible outcomes. Uh, one and four, four and three, three and two, and two and three. Uh, so the probability of event A, which is the uh, rolling a sum of five between two die, then is four out of 36 or one ninth. Um, so we can use these probabilities to write a probability model for each outcome by taking the number of winners for a given number of the number of possible outcomes. So here is my probability model uh, for each of the different outcomes, probability of 2 through 12. And so the sum of these probabilities should add up to uh, 36, because there are 36 uh, outcomes in the sample space. All right. So let's talk about basic rules of probability. We're going to kind of take from that idea of the two die. Uh, all right, so we're going to define the probability uh, of an event is a number that's between 0 and 1, inclusive of 0 and 1. Uh, so the probability indicates the likelihood that an event will occur. If the probability is 0, the event will definitely not occur. Uh, so we say a UFO lands in the quad that's unidentified flying object. Probability is less than 0.5. The event is likely not to occur. It will rain in July here in the Bay Area. Probability is greater than 0.5. Uh, it will rain in January in the Bay Area. And the probability is equal to 1 when the event will definitely occur. 
Um, it will definitely uh, today be some day in some year. So that will definitely happen. Uh, all right. So we can give another example. What's the probability that you roll a one or a two with a six sided die? So I had just one die. There are six sides. Each event or each outcome is equally likely. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have two outcomes that meet the criteria. Those are called the winners. Those would be in the numerator and the denominator. My total possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the probability that I'll roll uh, one or two with a six sided die is two out of six or one out of three. All right, so rule number one, the probability of an event uh, is a number between zero and one inclusive. One means definitely going to occur. Zero means definitely will not occur. And then everything in between, uh, either more towards the definite or uh, more towards the definitely not. All right, number two, all possible outcomes together must have probabilities whose sum is one uh, because some outcome must occur on every trial. The sum of probabilities for all possible outcomes must be exactly one. All right, so if we take the example of uh, rolling the die, these are all the possible outcomes for rolling two die. So the sum of all these probabilities should add up to uh, one. Okay, so that's rule number two. Uh, rule number three, when all the outcomes are equally possible, the probability that an event A will occur is uh, the number of outcomes with A <clears throat> over the number, excuse me, of possible outcomes. So we can say let X equal the rainy days in San Jose. What is the probability that on any given day uh, it will rain? So 84 days with rain, 365 days in the year. So the probability that it will rain on any given day is 0 0.23. Right, so it's the number of outcomes with A, 84 days of the rain, over the total number of possible outcomes. So if we said it rained 84 days in the last year, then I asked you, what is the probability if you randomly selected one of the days in the last year that it would rain? Your answer would be 84 over 365 or 0.23. All right, so let's go through some questions. Given a choice of an integer number from 1 through 50 inclusive, what is the probability that you choose some of these values? So I think I'm going to do 1 through 4 or 1 through 3. So you can pause here and try to do this with me. All right, number is less than 35. It's 0 0.68, 34 out of 50, 34 out of 50 uh, or 17 out of 25. Uh, uh, as your probability of 0.68. <clears throat> it could be a multiple of 4. Uh, there are 12 out of 50 of the integers between 1 and 50 are multiples of 4, so 0.24. And then a perfect square, 1, 4, including uh, 1, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. So there's 7 out of 50 uh, results where it's a perfect square in the field of 1 through 50 counting just the integers, that's going to be 0 0.14. Right, this brings us to our uh, homework problem. First homework problem, 5.2.1. You're going to take care of problems 4 through 6. Uh, so please do 4 through 6. And I'm going to move on in just a moment. All right. Uh, so let's talk about number four of the probability rules. Uh, number four, the probability that an event will occur is uh, one minus the probability that an event will occur. So I should say the complement of an event. So I need to rewrite this. Complement the complement of an event is one minus the probability that the event will occur. Um, all right, so we call this A bar or A with this bar on top or uh, A with the C in the upper right corner. And <clears throat> really it means not A. <clears throat> Complement means not A. It's the probability of not A. So here's an example in the bottom. If there's a 70% chance that will rain today, what is the complement of this event? Meaning what is the probability that it will not rain? 
And so the probability of not A, or the complement of A, which is that it will rain, is going to be 1 minus the probability of A, or 1 minus 0.7, or 0.3. So the probability that it will not rain is 0 0.30. So the complement of an event we're going to designate, in the book it's P uh, with an A and then A, or some event, and then the upper right of the event capital letter, you're going to write a lowercase c, like an exponent. All right, so the complement of an event is 1 minus the probability of that event. <clears throat> the complement of an event is a probability that it will not occur. All right, so we're going to find the complement of the event. You can work along with me. Probability, if the probability of x is 0 0.4, what's the complement of that event? Um, so I'm going to go through the answers here in just a moment. You can try to work this out on your own. All right, so the probability of not x is 1 minus 0.4 or 0 0.6. Uh, what is the complement of the probability that you roll a 1 or 2 and a 6-sided die? The probability you roll a 1 or 2 and a 6-sided die is, die is 1 out of 3. So 1 minus 1 over 3 is 2 thirds or 0.6 repeating. Uh, the probability that you have a pet is 0 0.7. The probability that you won't have a pet is 1 minus 0.7 or 0.3. Okay, this brings us to homework 5.2.2. Same set of questions. Find the complements of these events. I'm going to leave this up here for a moment. Then I'm going to move on. Okay, lastly, mutually exclusive events. Events are mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes in common, so they can never occur together. All right, so going back to our uh, die example, uh, the probability of rolling a 5 on your first roll is mutually exclusive from the probability of rolling or the possibility of rolling a 3. So you either roll a 5 or a 3, but you can't roll 5 and 3 together on the first roll. And we know mathematically that the events can be, but aren't necessarily, but can be uh, mutually exclusive if the probability of A plus the probability of B is equal to the probability of A or B. All right, so back to our die roll. Uh, probability of 5 plus the probability of 3 is equal to the probability of 3 or 5. And that probability is 8 over 36, which you can reduce to 2 over 9. Okay, so mutually exclusive events uh, have no outcomes in common, and they follow the rule probability of A plus the probability of B is equal to the probability of A or B. All right, so here's a summary of the probabilities rules taken from your book. For any event, the probability of A is between 0 and 1. If S is a sample space on a probability model, then the probability of S, the collection of all outcomes, is equal to 1. In the case of equally likely outcomes, probability equals the number of winners corresponding to event A over the number of possible outcomes in the sample space. The complement of A is going to be 1 minus the probability of A. And the addition rule for mutually exclusive events, if A and B are mutually exclusive, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. All right, this brings us to homework 5.2.3. And we are going to end here and come back uh, and talk about two-way tables. So I'm going to give you your homework. All right, so you have uh, some American adult that you're going to choose at random. And uh, event A is a person has a cholesterol level of 240 milligrams per deciliter or higher. Event B is a person has a cholesterol level of between 230 and 240 milligrams, not inclusive of 240. You're given the probability of A is 0 0.16 and the probability of B is 0 0.29. So please answer these three questions and then finish it up with a video. And I'll see you when we uh, start talking about two-way tables. So I'm going to leave this up just for a couple more seconds.